the times are not getting easier. Those whose job it is to report on certain struggles have become less interested in performing their function adequately. And the virus of misinformation is stoking the spread of the very real, less metaphorical virus affecting us all. But this is a moment of relaxation, of calm, and of rest. This is Lockdown Bard. This week's poem is called The Poet Insists on His Rights. Last week we did a praise poem. It was entitled On Cottle Red Hand. Now that was an example of poetry that was usually commissioned by a bard to praise an individual. This is an example of the opposite. The bards had a style of poetry called satire. Not entirely like the satire we have today. A satire was seen as a very, very powerful weapon, and it was used against those in power, chiefly. A king's reputation could be destroyed by a satire. A king's claim to the throne could be destroyed by a satire. It was said the bards could raise boils or welts on your face or even kill you with a well-worded poem. So this one is a threat, and a very serious threat. Attend to me, thou chief of the descendants of Uther. The rebuke of others thou needst not heed, when thou dost not lend an ear to thy poet, O moon of the host of Khan's race. If thou lend an ear to me, my friend, I have many a ground for complaint. Were I displeased with thy noble countenance, it were unjust to slander thee for that. I have got, O prince of others' race, from thy smooth-skinned countenance, brilliant as flame, the land of Koran, of blue-swelling hills, no payment in the world being exacted from me. Yet there are many bands about to reap me, thou offspring of princes, all with one voice opposing me. Every man of them is a danger to me. Not a day do I spend among the warriors of Koran without some prohibition reaching me from the fiery host. If the prince of Gower allow it to be taken away, there is no profit in getting anything from him. With one voice they vengefully assert, these evildoers, that I am not by any means the tiller of hills, which but yesterday were the habitation of wolves. Yet if the race of generous A believed that my land came from thee, O thou of the stately brow, even if I were free from any disturbance in the world, I should be loath to remain here. A fence that borders on the land of marauders. A spot where four tracks meet. A king's high road where every tumult settles. This is a neighbourhood that was never a mark for great love. In profit, therefore, I have never got half what I lost through armed forces. Not a quarter passes without the trail of plundering bands. It is a fine thread against the border of Lurk. Even if it were no risk for me to dwell near the race of Cunnel and the children of Nile, the people of Koran cost me dear, and the alliance of your own false stewards. Another farm, away from Koran, as that is the import of my sketch, I require, and A beside it, tis but a lean rib if unsheltered. If another farm in a secure spot be not obtained from the prince of the bare locks, when the keen spring weather comes, I fear thou must pay for the cattle. Tis thou that will put cattle in their place, 
O descendant of Magnus, whose strokes were ungentle. If thou carest not that they die in my hands, why should I spare my cattle? From thee I have got all that is mine. From thee I shall seek what I shall seek. Let the cattle perish, or save them. It is no less to me to be without a single cow. So as you can see, this poem it is more sarcastic in its nature. It's more scathing. The poet has been granted land in a certain area as payment, but the land is unfit. The neighborhood is aggressive and there is no protection being given to the poet as would usually be given to a vassal. And so the poet is demanding restitution, uh, relocation. The reference to cattle is that the client, the person who has paid, or in this case, failed to adequately pay the bard, would be keeping his own cattle on the bard's land. That would be part of their arrangement. And though they are being stolen, the bard has said, look, relocate me or I'm not going to put any effort into, re into protecting your cattle. I'm just going to let them be stolen. This is a style that would often be used when a bard was unsatisfied with their payment or had not received a payment. I hope you enjoyed this poem. And thank you for watching.